Thanks for joining us. I'm Anna Arenas. And I'm Cindy Reyes. Today at 5.30, we bring you in-depth coverage of election results. As well as positive stories about Florida International University students helping others in the community. FIU News starts right now. During his campaign, President-elect Donald Trump promised he would deport 11 million undocumented immigrants. But now, he has softened his approach. In a recent 60-minute interview, he said he plans on deporting just the 2 to 3 million undocumented immigrants with a criminal record. Marian Tapia visited poll sites around Miami and asked South Floridians what they think about the immigration reform. Election Day 2016. For some voters, it's just electing another president. For others, it's a matter of freedom. I was very scared. Uh, I mean, I couldn't even give my number to anybody because my parents were afraid that I would somehow tell somebody and then that person would report me because maybe their parents were against immigrants, so they thought, you know, they're going to not like us and they're going to track us down and we're all going to get deported. For Monica Lazaro and other undocumented immigrants like her, the election determined whether or not she would be able to remain in the United States. Immigration was one of the many issues brought up in the 2016 election. At a recent Dreamers event at FIU, immigration lawyer Cheryl Little explained the hardships of illegal immigrants. He was attacked by three guys. He was Guatemalan white guys. Um, he was killed. Um, and the guys told the cops they were, and this is a quote, guat hunting. Guatemala. Oh, yeah. The two frontrunners, Democrat Hillary Clinton and Republican Donald Trump, had two different approaches to handling illegal immigrants. Clinton favored a pathway to citizenship, while Trump favored deportation. The Republican candidate also pushed for a controversial wall between the United States and Mexico. We will build a great wall along the southern border. <laughs> and Mexico will pay for the wall. Election Day calls voters from both parties to come support Trump and Clinton. Here at the Coral Gables Public Library, voters believe both candidates have decent approaches towards immigration. I don't mean like to do harm to anybody, but you go to your country and then in your country you apply the right way because what are they teaching their children? They're teaching the children, you come here illegally, you work for years and don't pay income taxes. For Monica, the choice is simple. If Trump wins, I can definitely look at myself like this, you know, going back in a plane to Honduras. And although she and many others believe that Hillary Clinton would have been the best choice, ultimately it would be Donald Trump who would win the 270 electoral votes necessary for the presidency. This is Miriam Tapia with FIU News. As the presidential election came to an end last week, we witnessed history being made. For the first time in our nation's history, a woman has come close to winning the presidency. We set out on the day of the election to see how people felt either candidate could impact women and women's rights. Gender equality is a topic that has been brought up throughout this presidential election. With billionaire Donald Trump and Secretary Hillary Clinton running for president, many feel that this presidential election could bring change to the issue of gender equality. I just find it incredible that nothing disqualifies him. The things that would have disqualified a woman long ago were... So to me that means is there some kind of vein of... There's a vein of hostility towards gender equality and racial equality that is, is just very, very, very deep vein of that. With Hillary Clinton in the running, it is the first time that a presidential candidate can speak about gender equality and speak in first person. That idea is the one that has resonated with many voters. At the end of the day, I think a lot of people will be empowered by the fact that there is a female president. And I mean, being a young kid and, and learning that women can get to that presidential state, I mean, the highest of all um, occupations here, uh, that's really empowering. But when it comes down to it, like laws and things like that, I'm not sure how much, like how fast they're going to change. When, with this election. I think it'll be much more of a long, long-term process. I really hope Donald Trump wins because if Donald Trump doesn't win, you're not going to have many of the things that you have today. Both candidates promise changes that the citizens of the United States seek, especially for women. In the wake of President-elect Trump's victory, many women feel their rights might be in jeopardy. 
Next up, FIU wants to bring Vice President Joe Biden to help fight for our cause. Find out more right after this. Welcome back to FIU News. This year, FIU It's On Us campaign is petitioning to have Vice President Joe Biden on campus. The university's president, Mark Rosenberg, is urging students to join the petition. What better place for Joe Biden to be than in one of the most dynamic, energized uh, campuses in the United States that's fully committed to his initiatives, uh, drawing strength uh, from his very own words and his, and his experiences at the national level. FIU students are increasingly aware of this ongoing petition and social media has played a big part. It's tackling a problem that happens like all the time on a regular basis and it's for us to like come together and work together to like not let this happen anymore and if you see something to put an end to it. The It's On Us campaign expands education in sexual assault, prevention and bystander intervention. I think it's changed the fact that people aren't just hiding from this um, issue anymore but all of us are here, um, from myself to President Rosenberg. You know, um, we all care and we all want to be here for all the students no matter what happens. For more information about the It's On Us campaign, please visit FIU Student Affairs website. Nearly one in five US, U.S. residents have a disability. Locally in South Florida, the percentages are slightly higher than the national average. We now go to the newsplex to Dora Luz Aldarriaga and she was able to visit and saw how students are fighting to lower these percentages and bring help to those with a disability. Dora Luz? Thank you, Cindy. The young men at Florida International University's Pi Kappa Phi fraternity are able to show leadership skills as well as compassion every year through the Ability Experience. Every semester, they have week-long events where they are able to donate funds to those with disabilities and bring awareness to others about what it means to have a disability. Disability is a general term used for functional limitation that interferes with a person's ability. An FIU fraternity is bringing awareness to the community about this issue. I actually went to one of my first friendship visits when I was a freshman, which is where we go to a school called Bruceville Educational Center, and all the children are very severely handicapped. Most of them are in wheelchairs. In order to show students at FIU what it's like to live with a disability, the event called the Empathy Experience was created. In this event, money is donated to the Ability Experience. Whatever amount is donated, a person in which the donor chooses has to walk around campus fundraising double that amount donated while having an ability taken away. As that is occurring, the donor will also sign the pledge to support the Ability Experience. For me, the Ability Experience hits close to home because um, my best friend's little sister has autism, so um, you know it's something that I see day in and day out. Um, Sophie's a really big part of my life. And um, I love people with disabilities and being able to be a part of an organization that allowed me to also work with these kids was the reason why I got into the Ability Experience. To date, the Ability Experience has raised over $15 million to benefit people with disabilities as well as organizations dedicated to their service. This philanthropy focuses on the idea that the only true disability is a bad attitude, and this is the message that is being spread to students and faculty of Florida International University by the gentleman of Pi Kappa Phi. To date, the Ability Experience has raised over $15 million to benefit people with disabilities and organizations dedicated to their service. Back to you, Cindy. Thank you, Laura Luz. There is good news for people with tattoos looking to get hired. Having tattoos in the workplace became a taboo for professionals, but according to a study on ScienceDirect.com, grooming and business attire are more important than tattoos during the hiring process. Jahari Kanti has more. Rodolfo Pajares has tattoos all over his body. It's honestly just a one, one whole unison. I mean, if you take it apart one by one, I mean, the chest is one, the back is one, my arms is one, thighs is another. So it's, it's all one. It's all trying to be just one unison. Rodolfo also works as an assistant produce manager at a Publix in Coral Gables, and he said his tattoos haven't affected his job at all. Not at all. Honestly, only because Publix does not have a policy against tattoos. The same goes for Zachary Jacobs, who serves as a business analyst for Allstate Insurance. Zachary has tattoos on his thighs, calves, and arms. However, he also said that he works to make sure he maintains a professional look. Everything stays covered up for the most part. I, I wear pants, I have tattoos on my calves, but in uh, my workplace, we, we have the options of wearing shorts sometimes, but I won't just because of the tattoos, just to kind of preserve a more professional image. 
Both Zach and Rodolfo had their tattoos done by Alex Laporte, owner of Mystic Inc. and Cutler Bay. The 23-year-old tattoo artist said about 80% of his clients are professionals. Um, a couple of buddy of mine uh, do banking, the police force. Some of them are firefighters, some of them uh, are still in the military as well. Well, it's no secret that tattoos weren't always well received in the workplace, but according to an article by the Huffington Post, tattoos may not be a big deal anymore. According to the article, 86% of young professionals did not think that tattoos and piercings reduced the chance of getting jobs. The article also found that heavily tattooed professionals felt that tattoos made them more accessible to coworkers. However, the study also found that visible tattoos have a predominantly negative effect on employment selection. Carolyn Meeker from Career Services at FIU believes that there is a change in the tattoo taboo. I think that it is getting more common and more accepted. Mm -hmm. However, just know that there might be consequences. While tattoos may not yet be commonplace, Rodolfo plans on maintaining a career at Publix and finishing his full body tattoo. Alex said that completing Rodolfo's tattoos may take up to about two years to complete and will cost about $15,000 in total. That's all the news we have for you at 530. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and on Instagram for up to a minute coverage. I'm Cindy Reyes. And I'm Anna Arenas. See you next time.